Hey everybody, um, today I'm, I'm revising my uniform and gear care video because, um, well, upon re-watching my video a few times after I uploaded it, I kinda, I don't know, it just seemed a little poorly done. So, I don't know if I'm gonna take it down. I might just put the link to this video in that one, in the description on the other one, but I might take it down too. So, but yeah, in a nutshell, it just, it wasn't very good. I didn't have all the stuff in it I wanted to, um, so yeah. And, but before we start, I wanted to, uh, say the other night I finally got my, uh, channel verified so now I can I uh can do uh over 15 minute videos it's what well, up to 12 hour videos <laughs> I could do I don't think I will be doing 12 hour videos because my tablet probably won't be able to hold it but uh so yeah and if you and also if you saw my uh my last video my haversack tutorial uh, you'll see it has a custom thumbnail now, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm pretty excited about everything, um, and I can live stream now too. I might live stream. I'm not too sure though. I think it would be cool to live stream. You know, just talk about collecting and gear and stuff. So let's get into it. Um, to begin, uh. Uniform and gear care is very important to this hobby and in the actual military um, In the actual military uh, You have to take care of your uniforms just like like so um, Very you have to take very very good care of them as you had to in World War two um, Or else you would probably get um, punished in some way for not taking good care of your uniforms and nobody wants that so take good care of your uniforms it's very important uh, this video I'm basing around World War two but the information can be used in other eras uh, where it applies so yeah but anyway again you want to take good care of your uniforms you don't want to look like, you want to look like a million dollars. You don't want to look like trash. So, so to begin, um, we're going to be talking about storage. So, no matter where you keep your uniforms and gear, you want to keep the area clean. Uh, like if you keep in your closet, this is good right here. Keep them in your closet. Uh, Keep your floors, you know, keep them vacuumed, keep them clean. Uh, if you have a if you if they're in your bedroom and you like to lay your stuff out on the bed, uh, keep your bed clean. Uh, actually, uh, what I use I use a lint roller. Just go over your bed a few times with the lint roller, and that if you have pets, especially if you have pets like I do. Uh, You'll see that most uniforms and like and your bed really they uh, they're animal fur pet fur uh, magnets. So yeah, you want to keep you know bed clean, keep your floor vacuumed. Um, so yeah, and uh, with uh, storing your uniforms, uh. Keep them on hangers. I mean, I wouldn't really want to uh, fold any of these up and just keep them in a pack. I mean, it may be, you may need to for some stuff, like if you uh, pack it like they did in World War One, you may need to put some stuff in a, you know, like the bed roll and stuff. But I would uh, highly recommend, highly, highly recommend hanging up your uniforms in your closet. Or anywhere where they're off the ground. Uh, I use 
wooden hangers. You can get like a pack of five of these at Walmart for five to ten bucks. Really cheap. And plus, this is like what they used back then. They they hung all their stuff on wooden hangers, and then as uh, uh, as the as time went on, then they progressed to uh, wire hangers because you know these. This was the cheapest to make at that time, and this was the cheapest to make at this time. So, yeah. Um, I don't really use wire hangers on these, especially original uniforms. I've heard too many horror stories of guys who have had their uniforms on wooden hangers, I mean, uh, sorry, wire hangers, and uh, they uh, started to tear through the seam. You know, because it's a very sharp, not really sharp, but a small, thin hanger. So, it kind of gets in there. Whereas with wooden hanger, you have nice, thick uh, pieces there where, you know, it's, it'll hold up nice. But I just wanted, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want that to happen to any of my uniforms. So, yeah. Um, now we're going to, uh, with wool, I'm just going to go through, uh, you know, different articles of uniform, and, so yeah, wool, you, uh, wool is very, very important, very important, and, uh, if you're doing any, like, if you're doing any pre-1945 impression, and even most even some post-45 impressions, you're going to need the M1937 wool uniform. Very important. And if you uh, do World War I, then you're using the, uh, you know, the wool uniforms that they use then. But regardless, it's, they're very important, very crucial in any impression you might do. Um... You want to take very good care of these, as they're probably the uniform that you're going to wear the most. Um, with washing them, you uh, never wash them the way you usually wash clothing. Uh, only dry clean them. Uh, if you, uh, you know, dry clean wool. If you feel wool, it's a very dry material because it's what's well, wool. It's supposed to be dry. Um, you know, a, a dry, tough material. And when you, when you take water and mix that in there, it really messes up the material. Like, your uniform could just fall apart, really. Like, especially at the seams, it could just, like, start falling apart. Because you mixed water and all this junk that you don't need into your nice wool uniform. And it just demolishes it. Or with dry cleaning, dry cleaning is exactly what it, what its name says. It's dry cleaning. No water is used. So, it's water and probably some sort of detergent. Maybe like, I don't know what how exactly they do it. But all I know is they don't use water. And it's dry cleaning. <laughs> uh, when you have to dry clean them, you know, you can... Most places, I know most dry cleaners, a lot of dry cleaners actually don't touch this type of stuff. Like, you know, old uniforms, because there's a lot at risk when you wash a uniform like this. And people are very picky about uniforms, and if they get messed up, then the, then the dry cleaner is looking at a lawsuit in some cases, or just a bad reputation being started so the uh yeah um after you get them dry clean you pick it up from the dry cleaner or else if you have your own dry cleaner after you get them dry clean i know you, you should get them ironed if you have an if you don't have an iron if you don't have an iron i know some uh dry cleaners actually iron it for you with uh, an extra fee, of course. Uh, but, uh, yeah. 
um, iron it, dry clean it, or dry clean it, then iron it. Uh, uh, wool uniforms are, uh, I had, you know, remember how I said how, you know, beds and uniforms can be pet for magnets? Well, wool is the, uh, wool is the king of pet fur magnets. Um, you always get pet fur on your uniforms, uh, but, on your wool uniforms, but if you take good care of them, you won't have to worry about that. Uh, I would recommend keeping them in, like, a closed closet. I mean, most closets do have a door on them, but, yeah. Uh, if, I, uh, recommend lint rolling your uniform, your wool uniforms every once in a while. If you have pets. If you don't have pets, you don't have to worry about it as much. But I would still, you know, make an effort to keep your uh, wool uniforms pet fur free. So, yeah, just any lint roller will do. It's There really is no difference. I mean, some are higher end than others, but it's not really something you have to stress out over. And, uh... Wool uniforms are also, uh, moth magnets. Uh, if moths get to your wool uniforms, they can really mess them up. That's why if you see here, on all of my wool uniforms, I have this little round thing here. Uh, this is called a cedar block. The, uh, it's C-E-D-A-R. It's a type of wood. Cedar wood. Um, this is actually a, a cedar ring. But if you, uh, sorry about that, uh, if you, uh, s uh, if you smell these, it's a very strong scent, and that's what keeps moths away. So if you, you know, you can get them, the moth, or the cedar rings, put them on the hanger that you have your wool uniforms on, and you're pretty well set. Uh, you can get ones that have, like, a little hanger on them, it's like an actual block. Of cedar wood and has a hanger on it, you can hang it in between your uniforms. Uh, but you have to, although it is bigger, you know, if you have more uniforms, it's going to cost more to get a whole bunch of cedar blocks than it is to get a pack of like 20 of these for the same price. And you can, you know, spread it out evenly. Um, the good part about cedar blocks is when the scent starts to go away, all you have to do is take a piece of sandpaper and start going away at it until, you know, you start to smell it again, and then you're done, and you just put it back on. So that's pretty much it with, uh, wool uniforms. Now with cotton uniforms, cotton uniforms are very different. They are very important, though. Still very, very important. Uh, cotton and uni cotton uniforms. This would be, you know, your summer uniform, M43, or any field jacket, and HBTs, and your belts too. You know, trouser belts. I guess. I guess that's more of a canvas, though. But regardless. Those are your main uniforms that you will, that are made of cotton, that you're going to need to wash. Um, but you can wash those how you wash normal clothing. Throw it in the washer with some detergent, it's fine. Because if you look at the tags of most clothing today, you'll see that most of them are made of cotton. So, these are, most of these are made of cotton. So, if you kind of put the puzzle pieces together there, you can see, you can, you know, say, hey, this is cotton and I wash this one way. This is cotton, so that means I can wash it the same way. So, it's not really rocket science, just common sense. Uh, so, you know, just don't use bleach, that would be stupid. That would be a very dumb move on your part if you would use bleach on any of these because if you can see none of them are white none of them are supposed to be white so unless you're washing a white t-shirt don't use bleach um 
uh, you should get these. The only really uniforms that you need iron are your wool uniform. Oh my gosh, sorry about that. Your wool uniform and your summer uniform. Those are the only uniforms that you should get iron that need to be ironed. If you're going for a more presentable combat uniform, like some guys, you know, like in basic training, some guys, you know, there's that more presentable combat uniform look where it's just the wools with leggings and boots, your uh, M41 jacket, and I think that's the only time you may not even need to iron your M41 jacket for that, honestly. I wouldn't really take the time to iron your M41 jacket because it's a combat, it's a field jacket. It's not supposed to be presentable. Whereas with these, you're going to be wearing these in public. You're going to be wearing these with dress uniforms. You want it to look good. So, yeah. Wash like normal. Wash like you normally do. Iron. No bleach. Uh... Field gear, you know, haversack. Uh, I'm going to actually lay some stuff out, so I'll be back and stuff is gonna be laid out. Okay, we're back. Uh, as you can see, I laid out my haversack and my whole infantry setup here. Uh, like I was saying, with field gear. Field gear does not need to be presentable whatsoever. Um, field gear is field gear. It's made to get dirty. It's made to be, you know, roughed up. It's made to be field gear. Uh, as the field manual states, uh, you're only, if you get, you know, any sort of dirt or debris on your field gear, the field manual states to just take a uh, a brush and simply brush the dirt off. Um, the field manual doesn't say anything about using water. On uh, most places, don't say anything about using water on your field gear because um, if you put water on your field gear, uh, like if you leave your field gear out in the rain, it's gonna look a lot worse than it did before. I mean, that's good if you want to weather your gear, but I mean, this field gear was, it was made to be field gear, but it was made to stay presentable to a sense, so, you know, you would, uh, just take a brush and simply brush the dirt or debris off and you're ready to go. Um, now there may still be a little bit left, just keep on brushing. So, yeah. Very simple, straight to the point. Uh, now I'm going to uh, put this back and we'll be on to our next topic. Okay, we're back again. Uh, the, our next topic is brass. Um, any type of brass. This will include uh, buttons on dress uniforms, uh, belt buckles, and I believe that would be it, or, well, this, that's the stuff that's supposed to be shiny, uh, but, yeah, brass, um, you want your brass to look, look fun, sorry, I don't know what I'm saying here, you want your brass to look shiny and very, uh, presentable, um, so, as you can see, I have some of my belts here. This is an officer belt with the closed faced buckle. And you can see it's very shiny. This is the enlisted man's belt. Now, before you say anything, uh, I'm aware this these are supposed to be black. Um but when I bought this, most of the paint was uh the paint was for the most part completely gone. I decided, you know, I'm just gonna shine it to make it look better than it what it did. You know, it's, you know, just shine up the brass, make it look nice. So, with both sides, I made it look nice and shiny. Uh, you may be wondering how I did that. I used this, this, uh, 
this thing from heaven uh, called Brasso. Um, this is a multi-purpose uh, metal polisher. As you can see, use pewter, chrome, copper, stainless, brass, of course. Um, this is fantastic. This is what I use to shine all of these up. And what I will probably use to shine up any other type of brass that I may, you know, receive in the, uh, in the future. Um, it, this stuff is fantastic. I have no, uh, no, uh, nothing bad to say about Brasso. Um, how you use it, you, uh, I would recommend taking two old socks or like an old rag or something. Take one of the socks, fold it up like this. You want to put it in your hand and hold the Brasso can in the other hand. And you know, flip, put, put the uh, sock on top like this, and flip it upside down. After you take the cap off, and after you shake it up and take the cap off, of course, I'm gonna put, you know, the sock over it and flip it upside down so that you get some on there, and you're gonna want to just go at it on the brass. And you're gonna see there's gonna be streaks because this stuff is like a tan color. If you mix water with sand. And it like makes like a muddy consistency. That's what it looks like. Um, you just but you want to go go at it on there, and then that that puts the the polishing agent on there. Then to actually polish it, you take your other sock, and then go at it until there's no more streaks or anything. Then you have a nice looking belt buckle, and you're not gonna want to touch it. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying you can't touch it, but you're just not going to want to touch it after it's polished because it looks so good. Uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say about brass. Um, same goes for buttons. So, yeah, on to our next topic. Okay, everybody, we're back again. Uh, as you can tell by the stuff I have laid out here, the next topic is uh, mess gear. So here I have two um, sets here. Uh, I uh, sorry, I was thinking there. Uh, I have this. This is all the stuff I use in my haversack. Like you know, that's in the meat camp pouch, and that's in the canteen. Uh, both, but these, I have cleaned both of these. These, this, uh, this topic is on, uh, maintenance of, uh, you know, mess equipment. Uh, with canteens and, uh, and, uh, cups, uh, with these, this set, I, uh, this is both, you know, all one set. Uh, I... Took the cap off. I uh, snapped. You know, I uh, undid the chain on this part. You know, on the canteen itself. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> took the cap off. Undid the chain and uh, put in a pot of boiling water. Put both of these in a pot of boiling water. And uh, more so this. I mean, they were both in a, in a, water, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to think here, uh, but anyway, I, uh, took this, I, uh, did both of these, boiled both of them, that'll kill, you know, basically sterilize it in a way, I mean, that's, that's what a lot of big companies do, like, that serve food, they sterilize their uh, their stuff, uh, and then with the canteen, put some water in it, and took just regular BBs, like for a BB gun, pour some in there, and uh, shook, just keep on shaking. Uh, now there is one stipulation, I would recommend 
using this type of canteen. If you want to drink out of your canteen, use this type. This is the stainless steel type. Um, this is the aluminum type. You can tell by the uh, the, the rib on the uh, canteen itself. That's how you can tell one is stainless steel, the other is not. Uh, with uh, cups, you can tell here this one has more of a flat tinge to it as this one it has some shinier parts to it. That's how you can tell one is aluminum one is not. Um, on the exterior, if you want to, go over with Brello pads. If you know what those are, it's just a soap pad. It's like steel wool, and it has a, it has like soap in it. And when you get it wet, it starts to sud. And yeah, that's what I did with this. This mess kit right here. Mess kits, it doesn't matter what you do. Oh, and before you clean these, just look inside. More so with this. Make sure there's no rust or anything in them. That's why they prefer this, because it's stainless steel. It's not really going to rust, whereas with this, it's aluminum. And it's going to rust and pit, and you don't want to drink out of that. But, you know, just clean them out good, and you won't have to worry about anything. Now, with this, I clean this out real good with a Brillo pad. That's all I did with that, because you can actually get in there with a Brillo pad. Uh... I think I said this, I didn't clean any of these, none of these are cleaned, however I should clean them, I mean I don't use them, I don't use any of these, but if I clean this out I can use it, but yes, yeah, so this isn't clean, you can tell there's a difference in which one is clean and which one isn't, this one's a lot shinier than this, because this one has been with a uh, Brillo pad, so that's all on that and I'll see you with the next topic okay we're back again last but not least we're gonna talk about footwear um footwear is very important I mean you wear it it's on your feet it's what keeps your feet off the ground um I currently do not own any boots from World War II or any reproductions uh, but I have these. I use these for my Desert Storm ones, my Desert Storm stuff. So that's what we're going to be using <laughs> for now. Uh, this is, I actually use these for my World War II impression because that's all I have for you know. For now, it's in my opinion, it's a good substitute. I, I mean, I don't show it off with these. It's just for you know, just wearing it around. So. When you so you got your first pair of boots, um, first thing you want to do is dub them. Um, now there are different alternatives. You can use just regular boot dubbing, shoe dubbing. You can use boot oil. I mean, they all do the same thing. Uh, really, yeah. In for leather, this goes for most leather products too. You want to dub them to protect them from the weather. But with, you know, boots and stuff, it, you know, it, it keeps water from getting inside the boot. So, dubbing, boot oil, or neat, Neat's foot oil. Neat's foot oil, however, I have, that's what they used back in World War II. However, I have seen, I've heard accounts of guys who have used that, and it, while it protects the boots for a certain amount of time, it actually slowly... This is just destroys the leather. I mean, like it's not just gonna destroy it flat out, but it actually weakens the leather, but protects it from water and stuff. So I wouldn't use Neat's foot oil. I'm probably just gonna use regular boot dubbing or this boot oil stuff. Now polishing. Oh yeah, and after you, if they're your first your first pair of boots, after you dub them, just break them and wear them as much as you can. You get them broken in so they feel nice and comfortable. Uh, next, like if you want to, say you already have boots but you want to polish them, or the time comes to polish your new boots, um, just use polish. Any type of polish, you can buy this stuff at Walmart. Uh, I use mink oil. It's, this conditions and waterproofs at the same time while polishing. 
That's why it's for all colors. That's why it says that because it can be used to polish. Um, I use to applicate them. I use socks. Um, when I uh, when you're holding your hand like this, just go in, get some, and start going over your boots. Or else they have these at Walmart too. It's the Shining Go, or it's like a uh, sponge kind of, but it already has the polished stuff in there. Like if you feel it, it's, your hands are going to be slippery afterwards. But you can just go over that, and it's a nice quick shine. So you can use any of these methods. It gets the job done. I don't really. I know some people go all out with, uh, with you know waterproofing your boots like hey they did this back in world war ii so i'm gonna do that too um i with this i'm kind of leading more leaning more towards the practicality aspect of it uh i mean i do get where people are coming from you know trying to be accurate i have no problem with that it's just my preferences i would rather be safe than sorry i mean i would rather sacrifice the tiniest bit of authenticity for a nice clean clean waterproof pair of boots so that's it for today um i hope you enjoyed the video this was a long one sorry about that uh but again thanks for watching comment rate subscribe and we'll see ya